you need a physical vehicle. That's this, is the body. I got a custom made one that I've been working out a little bit, but it's just the body, you know? And uh, when this thing ceases to exist, doesn't mean I will cease to exist. I always exist, you know? It's eternal. It's just this body is a, and this experience is a temporary thing. Well, most people come into bodybuilding is because they want to, hey, look at me. They're extrovert people, I'm an introvert. So uh, the thing that appealed to me was this is a total, you win, you lose, everything in bodybuilding is down to you. It's not a team sport. I loved it, it was perfect for me. The difference was really uh, mental, I think, a matter of desire. Because sometimes when you have things coming a little bit easy, you're not uh, giving 100%. There were no teammates, there were no family, there was no, no, nobody to let me down. It was just all down to me, win or lose. How big can I get? How ripped can I get? How strong can I get? I want to go to the max. I don't want people to say, oh, that's, wow, that's a nice pretty physique. I want people to say, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah? That's what I wanted to do. Everything's mental. Everything's a thought. You know, you create your reality with your, with your thoughts. That's why I preferred to stay isolated. I saw bodybuilding as a way to change and, and improve my life. And then the last set is going to be like, like somebody's got a gun to your little baby's head, yeah? And he's going to pull the trigger unless you fucking give 100%. It's life and death. One set. my training partners they never saw me even my training partner would never see me with a top off because I was not interested in their opinion no disrespect but I was not interested in their opinion because they're gonna tell me I look great of course I do to them but I'm not standing next to Lee Haney or whoever I was uh, aspiring to, to compete with you gotta have a goal you know it's like uh, you gotta have a plan and, and a desire because if I haven't got a desire when it gets really uncomfortable you're probably just gonna say hey screw this this is enough I had a nice physique when I started, you know, I had a nice physique, I had nice abs and everything. But I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this to the max. Yeah! Yeah! That's it! That's the line! Woo! What a mass! If you do something, uh, a profession or a sport or whatever, that, that doesn't define you. That's not the whole of you. So everything starts with your mind, your, your thoughts. And you, can, you can change your existence, change your reality almost. Bodybuilding was so individual for me. I had to study the nutrition. I had to do the training. I had to find out how it worked with my body. If something's painful, you don't want to do it, right? But if you can overcome that, and like, if your body's telling you to eat, and you can, and you can like, just bring yourself to say, actually, no, I'm in control here, then other obstacles in life are not going to be so difficult when you come to face them. You build your story with your, with your mind, you know, and I built this story, I wanted to be Mr. Olympia. That starts with a thought, ultimately we're creators, we're all creators of our own reality. So if something in your life you don't like or it's a problem or whatever, it's, you got to kind of figure out what is it about yourself that created that or brought that into your life. I always knew that I was cut out to do something different.
I didn't relate to the, the, the circumstances and the people around me and their view of what life was. You know, get a job. A simple life. Get a council house, get some kids, go to work. You know, I'm like, there's got to be more than that. I can win Mr. Olympia, then I can do this, I can do that in different, different uh, areas of my life. You know, the, the, the greatest thing in life, the greatest freedom is when you don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck what people think anymore. That's really freedom, yeah? It's like a computer game. It's like a virtual reality game that we're all agreed to play in. I believe a lot of people become what I call crystallized, you know? Very early on. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. And, the, the, and that's it. It's not like I'm dismissing my past. My past is, is it made me who I am but I don't need to stay in the past. Blowing it down! Squeeze it down! Yeah! I had no distractions. In Birmingham, it's not a pretty place. You don't have beaches and all this kind of stuff and parties and girls and all the other kind of stuff that the other guys were exposed to. I, and I saw it as an advantage that I didn't have to deal with that. I just was pretty isolated. Training, eating, sleeping all year round, that was my life, and that's why I was the best. They knew all about each other, but Dorian Yates, they didn't know. It was almost like I had a feeling that I had to do this. It wasn't like, you know, I had to do it. I had to do it, it was like life or death. There's a spiritual aspect to, to training and to sport. As an athlete, you almost go to some places or zones, or something, almost you shift a little bit um, under extreme stress and pain. Sometimes you just, it just kind of melts away and you go to a different place. When I was going to the gym, I was almost like in a trance. Like nobody could ever talk to me because I was not there. Just in my own world, so between the sets, I just mainly like look at the floor or talk to my, you know, training partner, how much weight, not like what I didn't do last night or anything like that. No, it's none of that. After training, yes, but not before or not during. Yes! The guy that inspired me was Tom Platt. When I started, he wasn't Mr. Olympia, but he was very inspirational. And um, when he talked, it was just full of energy and enthusiasm for the training and pushing the body to its absolute um, maximum. This passion he had for like pushing himself into the gym for the, to the absolute maximum. And that inspired me to do that and try and take it even further. Put everything into it, you know. Nothing else exists, almost. That's my focus. I will not be distracted by anything. I'm coming here for myself. You tend to be in your own little world and work out your own things.
this is an experience that we're having and it's based on information from the five senses and that builds your experience. People just want stuff like, you know, they want stuff easy now. You know, everyone wants to be famous. Put the picture on Instagram, you don't need to do shit, just be famous. Go on Big Brother, be famous for, for nothing, you've done nothing. Yeah, that's, I don't know, I think that's a reflection of the way things are perhaps in, in everything. People are, are just really more concerned with the cosmetic, the look, and you know, taking their pictures and putting them on Instagram and all this kind of stuff. They're not really into uh, it's almost a spiritual side of it, you know, where you want to push yourself to that maximum and see how far you can go and uh, how, you know, how far your mind can go into the pain and all that kind of stuff. It really appealed to me this um, aspect of bodybuilding where it was really a soul endeavor. I was very much in a tunnel and, you know, my house would have been on fire. If I had to be at a gym at 11, my house was on fire, I would just call the, you know, fire service and, and go to the gym. I wouldn't, I would refuse to let outside forces influence me in any way. What you focus on is what you bring to your life, you know? Yeah. You focus on bad things enough, then, you know, bad things are gonna happen. So, for some reason, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of faith in myself. Behold, here cometh the dreamer. Let us slay him, and we shall see what will become of his dream. I didn't really have any support, so I felt like I had to do my own thing. You need some kind of extreme hunger, drive. That makes you strong, or you know, make you or break you, basically. Whenever you're pushing your body to a limit in, in any sport, I think there's always a, a risk of injury because you're, you're flirting with danger when you're, when you're pushing things to a limit. Um, but, you know, that got me from, uh, from being here. Uh, a backstreet gym in Birmingham, which is, you know, everyone knows it now, but back in the day it was just a hole in the wall gym. Not many people understood bodybuilding in my town, so to come from this place to win Mr. Olympia using a unique training philosophy, which I think uh, catapulted me past people with better genetics, then I can't say that, you know, I would absolutely change it. I think if I trained conventional bodybuilding wise, I would have been a good bodybuilder because I've got good genetics, but I don't think I would be Mr. Olympia. You can bring things into your reality. I was born and raised in the gym. Okay, the gym is who I am, what I'm all about. Okay, going to the gym. You want success, you want results. You have to do something about it. You just can't hope for it. You can't expect it just to happen because you showed up. You have to take action. You have to demand it from the universe. You have to demand it from your workouts and insist that it happens right now, here and now. The days before, you have to just all of a sudden daydream about what it's going to feel like. The night before, especially the night before, as you're eating your meal, you have to expect a good workout. You can't just think it's going to happen. You have to expect it. You have to already have practiced it in your mind. In your mind, in your workout, you have to imagine what the bar is going to feel like in your hands or on your back. 
You have to have this kind of mental rehearsal to get any kind of results. You have to do a lot more than just show up. You're thinking about it, you're envisioning the workout, you've practiced it many times, multiple times already the week before. You think about what's going to happen. You've already done it, but you think about what, how you're going to bring it to fruition, how you're going to bring it to reality. And you go over the daydream in your mind. On the way to the gym, you have to start getting anxious. If you don't get anxious anymore, and all you do is listen to some kind of music or something like that, and you're just thinking that you're doing it, you're not doing it. Turn around and go home, if that's the case. You just can't show up, you just can't pretend. You have to demand from the workout that you're going to get results. You have to have workouts in your brain already before. You have to have the results already in your brain before you can get there. You have to expect success because you've rehearsed it in your brain, in your mind. And it's going to take all of you. It's going to take every ounce of your being, everything you've got. And if you give it any less than everything you've totally got, you're not totally spent, you're not doing enough. After much careful, much thought, much thought, uh, I decided that this is very important to me. Driven by the white hot desire to stand alone as the world's most massively developed human. Uh, Your thighs literally scream for mercy, yet you blaze onward, resolved to create thick, striking massiveness. Basically, um, you've got to train and condition yourself to do heavy weights for a lot of reps. It takes time, it takes years, it takes a, a career. Come on! Get serious! One more! Dig! Dig! Keep on! Keep on! Life as you know it doesn't really not exist anymore. All you are is a muscle that was intention. You're the muscle you're thinking about. You become that muscle. And all that matters and all that you care about in the world is, is tension and going after each and every single rep and executing each and every single rep and getting more when you say you can't. And getting five more reps when you're done. And even getting five more reps when you think you're done. And then till you achieve failure, you fall in the rack, do some half ones, can't hang on to the bar anymore and somehow you do but it falls to the ground and that's usually an indication that the set might be over this is what you have to give it you have to give it this much otherwise why are you doing this in the first place you're not going to get results you have to demand it you have to promise yourself this is it right here you have to promise yourself that you will not ever be a failure. You have to marry this thought pattern. So when you get to the gym, I don't care if you're on your deathbed and you're dying and it hurts and anything, you have to promise yourself before you get there that you are not gonna go home a loser. I would rather die than acknowledge to myself that I'm that loser. There is nothing that I won't do. There's nothing that I won't do to avoid being a loser. 
And if you think you could have done more, you're a loser. You have to self make a promise to yourself that you will never ever go there or do that. And you will fight to the death to maintain your promise to yourself. If you don't think you can do this, don't. I'm me, I'm not nobody else. I just do what I do. Claim ownership. I own this place. Nobody's gonna tell me when to go or when to stop but me. In fact, I'm gonna go further than I ever went before. You can, and you must, and you will, and you should. And I can see it in everybody. If you really, seriously, sincerely believe that this energy works, it does. If you believe it doesn't work, it doesn't. Whether you're training for a contest, whether you're training to get big, whether you're investing money, whether you're courting a new romance in your life, whatever, this energy, that, that feeling has to be there and you have to believe it's with you. You have to just sort of grab on to what you believe in and grab on to what you know and who you are and, and, and go forward with that, whatever it is. And that's sort of what I learned from bodybuilding. Education is important, you know, sets and reps and nutritional applications and so on. Still, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of skinny scientists in the gym in the morning who will know all about how to make muscles grow. But most important to me is instincts, emotions. And then you deal with genetics too. I mean, very few bodybuilders have great genetics, great instincts and attitudes, and great education. If you have all three, I mean, one bodybuilder who came close was Arnold. If there's a risk involved in an exercise, and there is, if there's a risk associated with the movement, it's a good exercise. If there's minimal risk, why do it? It's probably a bullshit exercise, okay? I mean, there's a reason people don't squat. It's hard, it's hard. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy. Most people think it's all about the heavy weight. It's not. The weight doesn't matter. If, if your form and technique is pure, size and strength will fall. My attitude, the way I walk to the gym in the morning, the way I get in the car, the way I get on the phone, uh, I have a inner confidence that I've never really totally understood. You gotta go out there and fail. You gotta go out there and fall down. Most people have won big and failed big. On the next time I let your irons open and you are then ready, determined, motivated, inspired to take your physical self beyond any previous point of accomplishment. Number five, irons open now. Inhale completely and stretch. Welcome to the pain zone. It's where we live. It doesn't happen in 60, 90 uh, uh, days, a year, two, three. It, it takes a lifetime. The reps are more important than the heavyweights. I'll repeat that the reps are more important than the heavy weights. I don't think I ever saw some of the greatest bodybuilders with the greatest arms in the world do more than a 45 pound dumbbell. I never saw Arnold use more than a 45 pound dumbbell. Some of the greatest arms in, in, in the world, the world's ever seen. You know, when you think you're done, totally done, you have at least five, five more reps, okay? The feeling I have, the emotions I have, times on stage, the 86 Olympia was, was, oh God, I would train 25 more years for that one night. Forget about the money. It was just such a fantastic experience. I think everybody wants to feel good about themselves, which that's a nice side effect from the gym, to feel better about you, to feel better about getting up in the morning, to feel better about who you are and the world around you. That's what bodybuilding has given me most predominantly. There's gotta be a switch, go click. Now you're crazy. You will do anything, you will die, you're willing to die to get there.
deep-throated roar of the plate that exists on the train and just is music to your ears. We used to, in that film, in the old days, we used to always leave space between the plates so the plates would jingle, so the plates would make noise. And you came up from a squat and you draw them and completed the rep and go, deep-throated, deep-throated roar that was like music. And every rep, you wanted to hear that sound again and you wanted to complete that rep with as much force as you possibly could that would break, that would break fucking steel. You have to achieve failure. You have to take it that far. Nobody wants to go that far. It's too scary. But you know something? I got news for you. That's where winning is. The only place to go from failure is to win. You can't be sane and be a bodybuilder. You have to have that side of you that wants to, to go into the unknown, one wants to explore things that, that, that everybody doesn't. We want, to, we want to address feelings and statements that scare you to fucking death. You have to face them head on and go, well, here I go. Either I'm gonna die or I'm gonna succeed. More! More! Yeah, come on! The machine's gonna break. Go, 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 come on! Yeah, come on! It's the passion that makes the body, the body grow and change. It's, not necessarily the weight in your hand. The weight in your hand is like the paintbrush to an artist. The feelings and the emotions involved in bodybuilding. Not just how much, how many times. That's the whole thing about bodybuilding. It's, it's about you and, the, and your feelings and the dumbbell. Life doesn't happen to you. We all think that life happens to me. Life happens for you. It happens for you. I mean, opportunities will come to you every day. You can remain scared of the opportunities or you can embrace them and take them. My, my, what I finally realized that, and I want to share this with you, if you give up on your dreams, if you give up on your dreams, what do you have left? <laughs> Nothing. I can't live that way. I can't live that way. I have to live on the edge. We achieve failure in the office, in the business. Go out there and fail. Go fail. Go do it wrong. Get up, learn, and do it better. That's what the gym teaches you. People don't think, people think, oh, it's just the gym. Gym is life. In the gym, there's always five reps. Whenever you think there's not five reps left, you have five reps. When you're, when you're hurting, you can't breathe, you can't get up, you can get up five more times. In life, too. There's nothing you can't do if you want it bad enough. Most people don't want it bad enough. Kill me! Come on! There's everything you got! Come on! Five more! Keep going! Four! Okay, one more rep, one more rep. This is the last lap. This is the last 50 yards. You gotta give. You gotta give. Drop! Do not fail. Do not fail. You cannot be a loser. Lose is nothing. You must not lose. You cannot leave the gym a loser. You might rather die than lose. Give, give, give. Come on. More, 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 more. I could not deal with anything at that moment. So this is the, the difference. So this is why when I see guys texting, they're not serious. Exactly. And this is Mickey Mouse stuff, you know? You train or you don't. If you do something, then do it. Go all out. I think that we cannot just rely on God. We have to also do our own work. You know, I think the secret to success, it doesn't matter if you come from a little village, in Tal or from a big town. If there's one thing that you have to do, and that is you have to first of all work your ass off. And number 
two, you have to have a very clear vision of where you want to go. You have to be brave, and you have to be tough. You have to have the discipline to follow through. It is very important that you don't listen to the naysayers. Because in every step of the way, people say, this is impossible, it's never going to happen. I never listened to the naysayers because I believed what uh, Nelson Mandela said, that, uh, you know, everything is always impossible until someone does it. Dream. 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 I was poor because I didn't have anything. I had no money, I had no things, we had no TV, we had no refrigerator, we had nothing as kids. But I was rich because I had a dream. I think the biggest mistake is that you go to the gym and you go through the motion, but you don't really have your mind inside the muscle. I liked to be a little bit overtrained. Yes, you were tired. Yes, I had to come back for the second workout that night, but so what? When I went into the gym, I put my gym bag down and I immediately attacked the weights. I never felt sorry for myself, let me tell you, that it, was, it all paid off. Don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have time. You have time, you make the time. There was never one negative impulse in my last 15 years. Can you imagine you have a doubt that you maybe don't make it? Maybe I will never be a Mr. Universe. That's, that destroys the whole thing. You got to have faith in your vision. Many people don't like bodybuilding because they don't understand what it is all about. We work it until it hurts. It's a beautiful philosophy. It's a healthy sport and it's an art. For him it's not the most important that he has the most weight or that he has the most weight. Für ihn ist das Wichtigste, dass er das, den perfektesten Körper hat. Das heißt, das heißt, er muss Symmetrie haben, er muss eine sehr gut entwickelte Figur haben. Sehr viele Leute glauben, dass ein Bodybuilder die riesigsten Muskeln haben muss. Das stimmt aber nicht. Uh, riesige Muskelmasse ist nicht das Wichtigste. Für mich, uh, you know, uh, pumping up in a, in a gym and having a good workout is maybe uh, the same thing as, you know, having a sex uh, with, a, with a woman or something like that. What do you want in your life? Do you want to fall in love? Do you want to have a, be married? Do you want to have children and go on with the everyday life like all the other millions of people do? Or do you want to be the one person who is the best? So therefore you have to cut this off and go your road and don't go sidetracked, stay cold. You got to push yourself all the time because remember, the body doesn't really respond to the same thing over and over. But you got to always give it the extra punch. There was always all out and like I said the training partner was always responsible to challenge you at all times. Have a clear vision where you want to go. What is it that you're really passionate about and then go after that. No matter what it takes, go after that. As crazy as it may sound because you got to do something that you really enjoy doing. Also ich finde es wirklich sexy. Und das ist natürlich, was wir alle haben wollen. Sexy. <lacht>
what my body should look like to be the best in the world. And then when I had this vision in front of me all the time, I then could go after that. I mean, you have to have the, the kind of a mind as a sculptor has, because a sculptor has to do the same thing. You can have the best ship in the world. You can have the best cruise liner, but if the captain does not know where to go, that ship will drift around the world and out there at sea and will never end up anywhere. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a vision, you just drift around. I knew exactly that is where I wanted to end up. It is impossible to be a maverick or a true original if you're too well behaved and don't want to break the rules. You have to think outside the box. That's what I believe after all. What is the point of being on this earth if all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid the trouble? The only way that I ever got any place was the breaking some of the rules. It's a, it's a great sport because it is not a destructive sport. It's not like boxing where you hit each other, you know, or try to kill each other. So it's a healthy sport. It's a, a, the kind of a sport where you really can train every part of your body and you get mentally in touch with your body very much through bodybuilding and it, you become, you get a great relationship between mind and body which is the ideal thing really, which uh, is something that Plato already said, you know, sound mind, sound body. That's why I think bodybuilding is a very healthy and is the best sport. Experiencing uh, pain in your muscles and aching and just think go on and go on and go on. And this last two or three or four repetitions, that's what makes actually the muscle then grow. If you can go through this pain period, you make it to be a champion. It is progressive resistance! If you can go through, forget it. And that's what most people like, is on this having the guts. The guts to go in and just say, I go through and I don't care what happens. You know, it aches and if I fall down, I have, I have no fear of fainting in a gym. It doesn't matter, because it's all worth it. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. People always came up to me and said, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. The other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did, and every set that I did, and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. The last Übung is my Lieblings Übung. Draußen. Best Übung es gibt. It's been told to me that there's more to lift than more life than lifting iron. But in this moment, in this time, in this breath, it's what I do. Today's a good day. Live. Death isn't painful. It's the dreams that die inside of us that causes us to mourn, gives us that depression. Have the courage.
Nurture those dreams. Stand on the rock. Go out and shine. You might run across somebody today that needs that light. You might be just that person. Your presence may just be the present they need that's worth unwrapping. Seriously, your presence is the one thing someone may need today. Come on, Rory. Sometimes our past holds us back, and our past barks, but it has no bite. Break the chains that bind you. You're beyond your past. You have the now. I believe in you. Do you believe in you? Don't answer that. Make this day the day you start to believe in yourself. Go out and do the work. You're good enough. You know there's givers and takers in this world, and I believe we can be that one, that one that takes what they have and gives to others. There's so many people out there that are just on the verge of breaking. You've been there, I've been there. This morning and through the day, that handshake, that smile, even that hug that you believe is just a normal thing can turn into a supernatural moment for that person that really needs it. Damn, give them that hug. Make them know there's something. Make them know they're, they're extraordinary. You might be just that one that gets them out of the hole that day. Please. And it brings me to a story about an old donkey that fell into a pit. And uh, this old donkey was doing what donkeys do, screaming out, hee-haw, hee-haw. Old farmer heard him, looked inside the pit, saw the old donkey, realized he wasn't of any value anymore, so he got all of his partners together, farmers. They all grabbed shovels, they started throwing dirt on that, inside that pit. But at first that donkey was making a lot of noise. Eventually they didn't hear that donkey no more. So when they were throwing dirt in the pit, one of them looked under there, and they realized every time they threw dirt on his back, donkey would shake it off and he would have that dirt fall underneath his legs yes sir and eventually he rose above the pit same thing happens to us all right the world throws a lot of dirt on us the world throws a lot of crap on us you're never alone go out into this world and whatever the world throws on you shake it off let's go let's rise above it all what i found out what separates old from young and young from old, it's time. You got the rest of your life, and I got the rest of mine. Let's not waste it. You're good enough. Stay blessed. Now it's time to eat. I'm calling the pain. It's not an obstacle. I called it. Why should I complain? It's your pain, you call it, you're the host. So don't make the pain the host, because you'll suffer. But if you are the host of the pain, the pain works for you, all right? In your pain and in your suffering, you'll obtain the things you truly want in life. I stand on that rock. I'm humble, but don't try to push me off because I live for this rock. I live for this rock.
You're good enough. Now, let's do the work. It's a combination of things uh, I feel Lee Haney is, and that's what I strive to be, and strive to be more of that. I feel that uh, I know that uh, he is the best in the sport of bodybuilding. My philosophy has always been trained to stimulate, not annihilate. So if you hang around too long, annihilation will set in. I saw enough injuries over the years when people doing stupid stuff and ripping their bodies apart. When you look at the fact that 75% of reaching your, your, your fitness goals has to do with nutrition, 70 to 75%. The other percentage has to do with training. You just have to understand the science of how to go about doing that. And you can do it without ripping your body apart. You never heard of Arnold tearing a bicep, a back, a quad. Never heard that from Frank Zane. You never heard that from Muhammad Akawe. You never heard that from Albert Beckers because they train smart. They train to stimulate, not annihilate. And then you have some of these so-called gurus all over the internet now saying, well, you know, there's no such thing as overtraining. There is a such thing as overtraining. Live long enough real experience. To become a professional bodybuilder uh, at Mr. Olympia is a fantasy and o only few have been able to real, uh, realize this. I uh, love Robbie, love Arnold. You, know, you gotta love Arnold. He, he had such a tremendous impact on the sport of bodybuilding. Then of course, Serge Bray, Serge Olivier, Bertrand Fox, and Frank Zane and Ed Cornett. I've always had the mindset of, I have to beat myself. I gotta compete against me. Listen, there's only one Arnold, there was only one Lee Haney, there's only one Randy Coleman. That's a whole different type of mindset. People like that are, people like that are born every so often. You can't make a person like that. They either have it or they don't. I didn't spend time wasting time, you know. I guess some guys would be going out clubbing and doing other things. I was in the gym. Nervousness was never a thing that I carried with me.
always tell people that Lee Haney is by far the greatest bodybuilder of all time. I'm not gonna beat anybody down. My life tells me to be about the positive and not the negative, to build up and not to tear down. So having that mindset is who I am and what made me the person that I was and still is and being a Mr. Olympia, I enjoyed the entire journey. I still enjoy it today. So I was always focused on my package, the package that was said to be the ultimate physique. I was never afraid of anyone defeating me. Uh, I always knew that I had to be better because when you're on the top, there's nowhere to go but down. You can fall at any time, no matter who you are. So you better have this stuff together and do your homework. You can't train like a horse and eat like a bird. Arnold has done a great deal for the sport of bodybuilding. You know, due to his efforts and his hard work and determination shown throughout the years, he has set our sport in the limelight, which is fantastic. And uh, as I now approach his record, uh, and hopefully break that record. Oh, I'm gonna break it, fellas. Don't worry about that. The USA wearing number four. Please welcome. The 80. A former Mr. America, a former Mr. Universe. A good welcome now for Lee. It all depends uh, largely upon how much time you give to the goal of what you're reaching to. That determines how successful and how long it takes to get there. It's amazing. Um, each year brought about something different or another different turn in my life because, as you know, I was a father as I trained for the Miss Olympic competitions. I've been working three months, four months, getting ready to let me show the world, and there we go, and it's a party from then on. You enjoy yourself. I'm ready. You're ready. When you hit that stage, you're ready. And that's what brings about that smile. That's what brings about charisma, because you've done all that you can do. Whenever you see a guy walk on stage and he's looking down, or he's wondering, or he has this questioning look upon his face, somewhere, during his training, he lacked. Unless he just have it's just a psychological imbalance there. That is the only the only way. But to be an Olympian, you can't have a psychological imbalance. Otherwise, you wouldn't be an Olympian. You would still be one of a million other bodybuilders. 
and not amongst those top 10 Olympians in the whole world. How young really should people start bodybuilding? Any views on this? Well, serious bodybuilding, um, that's something that has to be taken a step at a time. As far as youngster get it, youngsters getting into it, it all depends on their ability to pay close attention and to follow directions, you know, early. I talked to Cheryl, I said, baby, you know, I've done, my wife, I said, I've done seven Olympias in a row. No one has ever done seven in a row. And I said to her, well, what do you think about that being, you know, it? Being a competitor, Shirley is. She looked at me and said, it. What do you mean, it? She said, you got to do eight. What are you talking about? Let's don't even have this conversation anymore. That's my wife. And so that gave me enough zeal and fire to go on to do that eighth Olympia.